everyone, Josh here. So today we're doing a quick video on tuning the CJAA TDI, doing it at home with a Powergate flasher. Uh, so we're gonna do a comparison between stock and tuned, as well as how to get the tune, or how to get the stock file off of your car and getting the new tune file on. So there's a few things you gotta go over here and then we'll get into actually doing it. So most tuners in North America for these common rail cars, you're gonna use a Powergate flasher. So you've got your data link cable, and then your OBD2 cable, and then the power gate itself. And then depending on your tuning company, they're gonna have a different program to get the files off of here onto your Windows laptop, which then you can send it to them and then getting it from there back onto here. So today we're using MR tuning. So they'll send you a little file whenever you purchase the, your kit, and then you can uh, tune it at home and get revisions if you have issues with it or down the road if you wanna modify it. Works pretty nice, saves you take going to a dealer. So as far as getting the file, I've got the power gate plugged in. I've got a battery charger. Of course, I parked just far enough away that I got the cord all stretched out here. Um, I've got the e-brake up one click too, so the daytime running lights don't come on. And then keys on here. So we're gonna click tuning. Um, a million options here apparently. And of course, V is at the very bottom, Volkswagen. Um, I got a golf sports wagon, but I guess maybe it's a sports van. So I know it's a Bosch EDC 17. I'm going to set this down here until I can find the right one here. Okay, so I went through a few different cars. The Golf had the 2.0 TDI 6-speed manual transmission, transmission CJAA, whereas I've got an automatic. So I went to Jetta, and then obviously you have to make sure it's the EDC 17. This is CP14, apparently. And then you just click on that one. So then hit that button. Key on and confirm. Stock file missing. Start to read the ECU. So say yes. Read complete. Switch ignition off. Disconnect power gate. So I guess I hit OK. I'll unplug it. Should shut off. So the stock file should be on here. So now we need to email it to the tuner. So whoever you used should have sent a program. And then you just use your Windows laptop and plug this in. So we'll do that next. Okay, so we got it plugged into the laptop. Then you have to gonna go to your file. Let it think for a second here. Okay, so it ended up doing an update, but now I think we're set. So we should be able to click. Download data, start. And there you go. So I got that saved. So now you just email that file to whoever your tuning program uses. And then uh, they'll send you a file back here. So we'll get, cover that off when we get the file back. All right, so we're many months later and we're going to get this tune installed here now. So we've got the power gate plugged in. Just let it do its thing. Okay, so it seems to be done thinking now. We're gonna do upload data. Browse. And then find the file that you saved it as. So that's the modified file from the tuning, which was MR tuning. So now that should be putting it to the power gate. So we're gonna let this think here for a minute and then we're gonna go to the car. All right, so we have the battery charger on there. 
10 cylinder battery charger. I've got the e-brake handle up one click so the headlights or the daytime running lights stay off. So key in the ignition. Grab the OBD adapter to the power gate. Um. Plug that in underneath there. Let me there. I should stop the beeping. Let the power gate do its thing here now. Okay, so tuning. Continue with the writing of the file. Yes. So we've got original file. We've got a 25 horse or a 55 horse, so obviously it's my wife's car, so we're gonna go for the 55 horse. So this is a good time to mention, if you're doing modifications to your car that require the tuning, it's probably a good idea to get the tune on the car first to make sure it actually goes through okay. Um, nothing's worse than doing all these modifications and then the tune won't go on or you have some issues with the file itself and then you're stuck without a car, so it's just kind of a good habit to get the tune on first. So we're gonna let this do its thing and then uh, I'll uh, jump back on here when it's done flat. Okay, so that went really quick. So we're gonna do key off like it asks. Okay. Key on and confirm. Hit okay. Okay, so you can hear the engine fans kick on, so definitely good to have a battery charger on it. All right, let, let's do its thing again for a little while here. So this is actually putting the file onto the ECU. So before, I think it was just kind of getting it initially ready to get flashed, so now it's actually flashing the file onto it. All right, so we're 10 minutes in, so you're gonna wanna make sure you've got a good battery charger on here, because the fans ran the entire time. So key off and confirm. Okay, and so when that says don't interrupt it, it's not kidding. You can brick your ECU during the flashing time here. So uh, yeah, don't uh, don't key off when it doesn't want you to, or don't unplug it. And definitely make sure you got a good battery charger on it, or unplug the fans. Key on to confirm. Switch ignition off and disconnect power gate. So there we go. So that's that. So hopefully it starts. So I've had the battery disconnected before doing this, so that's why I've got the couple of these warnings here so everything should be good the check engine light went out um, I'm gonna scan it with VCDS and just make sure everything's out or clear it and make sure it's all good to go and then um, this car is gonna go in for an inspection and then when we get it back we're gonna do an on-road test between stock and modified okay so we are stock file or the car is the stock as I'm gonna be able to get it uh, slightly oversized tires um, other than that the car's factory it's a, the sports wagon so I've reset the consumption. Um, the trip has been reset on one of the settings there. So I've got a little country loop that I do and we're gonna do a zero to 100 kilometer an hour test, which is zero to 62 mile an hour. Um, it's gonna be a pretty well identical to what I did with the Passat video last year, or maybe that was two years ago. Um, but anyways, we'll, uh, I'll get out to the spot where I'm gonna do the zero to 100 and uh, we'll kind of time it after the fact and see how the stock file compares to the tune file. 
Okay, so we're at the test spot here now, so I'm just gonna flat foot it. So I'm gonna probably, it's a DSG, so I'm gonna rev it to about a thousand and then just flat foot it to 100 kilometers an hour. So we'll see how it goes. I'll put a timing or how long it takes after when I do the editing. like no power consumption so definitely not quick um it definitely did a power cut there the first time so i think i launched it close to a thousand so we'll see when we get back i imagine the tuning will the tune file will let us do a little bit more um but yeah i'm about halfway done so we'll talk when we get back to the driveway all right so we're back here so 5.7 liters to 100 kilometers and that was a 17 kilometer route so i know it's not the farthest drive um, most of it's country roads at 80 and then a little bit in town that's 50 kilometers an hour. Um, I know this isn't the most accurate, but we'll go over it after the tune file. We're going to do some comparisons and stuff like that. All right, so I've got the consumption reset, the um, 55 horse tune is on it. So we're going to go drive around the same loop and I'll uh, jump to the point here where I'm going to do the 0 to 100. Okay, so we're back at the same spot here again. So now stage 2 tune run. So it does the same um, power kick or whatever, but or a power cut. So we're gonna. There we go. So a little bit more torquey off the beginning there. Chirped the tires pretty good. I should have made that traction control off, but. Um, yeah, you can feel the power a little bit more, so we're just going to finish the loop here, and then uh, we'll talk when we get back to the driveway. There we go, we made it back, so 5.3 liters to 100 kilometers on this one, and same thing, so this, well, it must be close, 17, 18 kilometers. So same loop, same driving, and then same the 0 to 100, so it should be pretty well identical, so now we'll go over some comparisons here. Okay, so going over this right now, so the tuned one was about 9 seconds and the stock one was about 14 seconds. So looking online, that is a terrible uh, 0 to 100. It looked roughly, like from videos and some reviews, it seemed like they're normally around the 9 to 10 seconds stock. So I'm thinking it had something to do with it being in limp mode or a version of limp mode. There's no codes, but um the other option is the bigger tires so i used my draggy of course i lost the video on that but using the with the stage two tune it was about 8.5 seconds today so you can maybe shave half a second off both those times um but i do think the heavy tires definitely aren't helping it at all but it did make a fair big difference you can kind of see like line them up together there so the tune makes the drivability a lot nicer, um, obviously a bit quicker there. And then the next thing we're gonna talk about is fuel mileage. So that's usually why people buy TDIs is for the fuel efficiency. So I had the same thing as what I did in my Passat video. Um, we have the stock was 5.7 liters, 100 kilometers, which was 41-ish miles to the gallon. Um, and then tuned, I got 5.3 liters, 100 kilometers, which would be about 44 and a half miles to the gallon. So this is using the screen. I know it's not the most accurate, so it's kind of a rough idea. Um, when I did my Passat video here, it, the stock versus tune difference, even like after putting a couple of tanks through, it was fairly accurate. So I think that's a good number to go off of. Um, so the Passat video here, when I did it, uh, fuel was more expensive. It was two dollars and thirty-five cents a liter, which was eight eight point nine dollars a gallon, roughly. Um, now it's kind of gone down to just over two dollars, which is seven point eight, roughly. Um, the 
Passat had a really big gain. I think it was also in a limp mode of sorts with um, death issues. So it went from 6.6 .6 to 5.2. So it's a huge difference. Whereas the CJAA, it only went from 5.7 to 5.3. So not as big of a difference. Um, so when we looked at the Passat, so just strictly the tune, the basically the whole kit, uh, basically would pay for itself in about 42,000 kilometers, which was 26,000 miles. And then if you would incorporate the repair costs of different sensors and stuff like that, it would obviously pay off a lot quicker. Whereas when you go to the CJAA, the after treatment, the DPF and CAT, they're worth a bit more money. So the $1,400 we're starting out at is more like $300. So that pays for itself really quick when you're only trying to offset the $300 instead of the $1,400. Um, also with the video I did on comparing different TDI delete kits, you can basically that number there, the $1,400, it can go down to eight or up to 2,600. So there's a big range on the kits, depending on who you want to use for the tuning and downpipe, all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, this is a really simple way to kind of look at it and make it make sense. So if you're just looking at fuel savings alone, it'll pay off in 170,000 kilometers, which that thing will be, what's that 260 now? So it's going to be, yeah, up there in mileage, but the drivability is really nice. I'd like to get a DSG tune on it yet. And then, uh, I think that thing will be tidied up real nice. So hopefully this video kind of helps you look at the different options for the tuning, um, what you kind of gain and stuff like that. So that's it. And, uh, thanks for watching.